Hello, in this video we are going to look at the astrological triggers for an event that occurred in American Hollywood life. This is an event that received a lot of attention. We're going to see how we understand this event, how we see this event, and how we can use this event information from the astrology to help a client. And the event I'm referring to occurred on March 27, 2022. That was a Sunday in the evening between 7 and 8 p.m. I was using a time of 7 p.m. I saw a time given by someone of 7.35 p.m., but somewhere roughly between 7 and 8 p.m., uh, there was this, uh, what do they call it, um, Oscars award ceremony, and Chris Rock is a comedian, he's the MC, and he makes a joke about Will Smith's wife, and Will Smith takes offense, he goes up on the stage, and he slaps Chris Rock, and you see him slapping Chris Rock there. This created a lot of public attention and discussion, a very upsetting and strange thing that occurred, not completely uncalled for, because Jada, the wife of Will Smith, her head is shaven uh, because she suffers from hair loss from a disease called alopecia, and she's been very open about it, and it's been very much a difficult struggle for her. You could even say traumatic. And Will Smith, uh, the husband of Jada, didn't think it was very funny to make a remark that alludes to her bald head, and he went up and smacked uh, Chris Rock. Now, I'm going to use vibrational astrology to analyze what goes on, and we're going to see how we use the evidence-based approach of vibrational astrology to understand what's going on. Now, what we do, let's look at the bottom of this slide, is we apply a model to an event. We don't just search for any possible astrological relationships. I've read things online about people saying, well, Will Smith was born with Moon and Scorpio. Scorpio gets nasty. These are just kind of random associations. What we do is we apply a model. What is our model in vibrational astrology for things that are upsetting, sudden disturbance? The model is the planet Uranus is probably involved, and 11 vibration is probably involved. 11 vibration is the most unstable, erratic vibration. Uranus is the planet of sudden erratic change. So Uranus and 11 vibration is usually involved. Sometimes 8 vibration is involved because 8 vibration can be involved in anything. In addition to Uranus, you'll often see Saturn or in this case Mars because it was an action taken. And it's very easy to do this analysis. There are several ways to do it. One easy way is to simply make a bi wheel. So we make a bi wheel. I'll show it to you on the next slide with the event this event of Will Smith smacking Chris Rock. We t do that chart. We put that in the outer wheel. We put Will Smith's birth chart in the inner ring. And we only have A accuracy for Will Smith. We prefer AA. But A means it's, you know, it's probably accurate. And that's all we have. So let's work with that. And let's see what, what shows up. Well, there is the by wheel. Again, in the inner ring is... Um, Will Smith, born September 25, 1968, 9.47 p.m. in Philadelphia. That's his 11 vibration chart in the inner ring. And in the outer ring is the the event uh, where Will Smith slaps Chris Rock, uh, March 27, 2022 at 7 p.m. Could have been a half hour later in Los Angeles, California. And what do we see? I've put, uh, you know, little uh, rectangular shapes around the planets and lines to draw your attention to it. Let's look at transiting Saturn up at the top of the chart in the outer ring at 28 Aquarius 23. Up here is trine Will Smith's natal Uranus at 28 Virgo 12. That's a trine with a, what is that, an 11-minute orb. Uh, 
Oh my God. Transiting Saturn, trine natal Uranus with an 11 minute orb. Now remember, this is in the 11 vibration charts. So if you're thinking, well, gee, Saturn wasn't in Capricorn on March 27, 2022. No, this is the 11 vibration chart. And it's showing 11 vibration effects. And a trine is not all smooth and happy and pleasant and all is good. Trine means that this just happens very quickly and easily. And, you know, before you know it, there it is, it's happened. And that was one of the surprising things about it. There's very little to to trigger this. I mean, Chris Rock made an off-color joke. That's what Chris Rock does. <laughs> He's just, come, you know, one constant stream of off-color jokes. And a lot of times those off-color jokes verge on being disrespectful, of being hurtful, which was the case here, uh, that uh, Jada, Will, Will Smith's wife, was very offended by the joke. It was obvious in her facial expression. So there's that Saturn to Uranus. And then transiting Uranus at 19 Cancer, 37 is in a tight quincunx to Will, Will Smith's natal Saturn. The orb there is 21 minutes. These are tight aspects, nearly exact, of transiting Uranus, quincunx natal Saturn, transiting Saturn, trying natal Uranus both ways. Saturn, transiting Saturn to natal Uranus, transiting Uranus to natal Saturn, basic, straightforward aspects. And on top of that, transiting Mars is conjunct natal Mars. And, in, and there's a little bit of a configuration going on here of sextile, sextile, trine. The transiting Saturn at 28 and a half Capricorn is within orb of sextiling the natal Mars. And in fact, it's within orb degree and a half is still, you know, within orb on the Mars and Saturn uh, transits. But transiting Saturn is sextile the natal Mars, uh, a little more tightly, about a one degree orb. And let's see here, the natal Uranus at 28 Virgo that's a weak sextile to the natal Mars. Anyway, it's spreading a little bit. Some of it's a little bit weak. Some of it's tight. Four planets transiting Mars and Saturn, natal Mars and Uranus, all tied together in this configuration. In fact, using the orbs we use for natal charts, we would use an orb of two degrees, 40 minutes. Actually, all of this is within that orb. For transits, we usually like to have half of that orb it's there. Bottom line is it's there. <laughs> Four planets, both Mars, both transiting natal Mars, transiting Saturn, natal Uranus, and then a separate configuration of transiting Uranus, quincunx natal Saturn. There it is. That is what triggered the event. There it is. Very simple, very plain, very straightforward. Using our model, it stands out very clearly. There it is. And we can go into the details of interpreting this, and then we get a clearer feeling of exactly what is this energy flow? What does it mean? What's getting triggered? What's going on with Will Smith? Now, we we cannot do uh, Chris Rock because we don't have a birth time for him. I didn't look at Jada. I don't know if we have a time for it. I didn't even, I didn't even explore that possibility. But looking at Will Smith, it's very clear what's going on. Now we can go into greater detail because, let me go back to the previous slide, because we have trines and sextiles involved. What is the rule we use in vibrational astrology? We multiply by three. And those trines will turn into conjunctions or because a trine is one third, we can multiply by uh, six that it would turn the sextiles into conjunctions. Let's multiply by three. I believe that's going to turn the sextiles into oppositions. It would turn these four planets into, you know, the four planets of transiting Saturn, transiting Mars, natal uh, Mars, and natal Uranus into a direct alignment of conjunctions and oppositions. Let's look at it. Natal Saturn, Uranus. No, natal Mars and Uranus and, and transiting Mars and Saturn. So the transiting Mars and Saturn 
are there and the natal Mars and Uranus are there. There is the alignment. So transiting Mars is still conjunct uh, natal Mars and its opposition, the natal Uranus and the transiting Saturn. And we also notice that Neptune, the natal Neptune is involved. A very clear striking configuration. We're seeing Mars, Saturn, Uranus, also with Neptune. That is the classic disruption. I mean, you can't get more disrupted than Mars, Saturn, Uranus in an 11 vibration. Wow. Sudden disruption. We can use the time adjust. We'll see how long this lasts. The Mars is going to be conjunct Mars during this award ceremony that lasts about three hours. It's within orb the whole time. And these slower planets of uh, Saturn, transiting Saturn and Uranus, they're in orb for several days. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. It's all happening right then. Wow, it's so clear and so straightforward. And the other aspect, let's go look at it. This quincunx of transiting Uranus to natal Saturn in 11 vibration, when we multiply that by 3 to go to 33 vibration, that transiting Saturn is now square. I, I mean, transiting Uranus, let's go back to that. It's trans, whoops, <laughs> sorry. Transiting Uranus to natal Saturn in 11 vibration, when we bring it up to 33 vibration, it's transiting Uranus square natal Saturn. I drew this curved red. And also interesting, notice this. When we look at it in 11 vibration, let's go back to the 11 vibration, this transiting Uranus, quincunx Saturn, is a separate pattern. We have two patterns going on. We have the four planets, that's the bigger one, and we also have Uranus to Saturn. When we multiply by three, they tie together. It's even a larger, more powerful configuration. They tie together. This happens, by the way, often when the last digit is the same. You have tw nine here, 29, 19, which is one nine. You multiply by three and you might get, um, you've got that, that 10 would turn into 30, which becomes a semi six It often ties together. And sure enough, it does. What we have here is transiting Uranus at 29 Aquarius 51 is semi-sextile transiting, let's see, 28, I'm sorry, 28 Aquarius 51, transiting Uranus very tightly semi-sextile, the natal Mars. And the this natal Mars is sextile the natal Saturn. So what's happening is that Uranus and Saturn are tying in to the four planets. The, the separate two planets of transiting Uranus to natal Saturn are making some aspects to the main four planets. The, the larger configuration is all getting tied together. So, for example, we see here that transiting Saturn at 25 Virgo is trine natal Saturn. Bottom line, we have a huge Mars-Saturn-Uranus configuration in 33 vibration. This means the person is going to fly off the handle very easily. They're just going to, boom, something's, they, they're just, they're just not comfortable. They're just, something explosive can happen very easily. And uh, with Will Smith, he's not this explosive, this erratic most of the time. He's dynamic and so on. But his 11 vibration is not out of control. What's out of control are the transits on that day. It's explaining exactly what happened. How a person who normally is not erratic, let's call it, you know, or explosive or full of surprises, suddenly is a little bit out of character, a little bit more explosive than usual, if it wasn't more explosive, if it wasn't a little more unusual, we wouldn't have had the shock that people have had about this event. Uh, the other celebrities and actors who were there, the shock on their faces, the surprise, 
this came a little bit, you know, it was, it was not anticipated. And that's what happens when you can get transits that pile up on you like this with a huge Mars, Saturn, Uranus theme. I'll talk more in a minute about exactly how we interpret it. So here we've gone up to 33 vibration. If we go to 44 vibration, we're just taking the obvious multiples of 11. 11 times 3, let's go to 11 times 4, go up two active, octaves. In 11 times 4, we do not see all six planets piling up closely together, but a curious thing happens. Transiting Saturn at 23 Cancer is very tightly trying natal Uranus. And transiting Uranus at 18 Gemini is very tightly trying natal Saturn. We have an isotrap pattern that's very, very exact formed between both Saturns and both Uranuses. In other words, both the natal and transiting Saturn and the natal and transiting Uranus. Because the, this trine from 22 Pisces to 23 Cancer is a little bit less than 121 degrees. And this trine from natal Saturn to transiting Uranus is slightly over 121 degrees. They're both very close to 121 degrees. The resonance here is huge. That was kind of interesting how in when you go to this vibration, you get this configuration. It's just kind of interesting. We don't need this to, to be clear that there is a huge Mars-Saturn Uranus configuration going on. We see that when we go back here to the 11 vibration, I mean the 33 vibration, how powerful this configuration is. So many, both Mars, both Saturns, both Uranuses, all tied together in this spreading pattern with many tight aspects, very powerful. But just for fun, looking at it times 4, 11 times 4, and it's also interesting to look at 11 times 12. So a lot of times when we want to look at overtime, overtones, we'll look at the, vape, the basic vibration, 11 times 3, times 4, and times 12. And when we go to times 12, oh my gosh, it's really extraordinary what was going on at that moment. What, let me read my notes. In the bywheel of the 11 times 12, and that's 132. In other words, we have in the center ring Will Smith's 132nd vibration chart. In the outer ring are the transits at the moment that this happened, 132nd vibration chart. And what we see... Um, is that Saturn is conjunct Uranus both ways. So over here at 8 Pisces and 10 Pisces, transiting Saturn conjunct natal Uranus. And up here at 21 and 25 Scorpio, transiting Uranus conjunct natal Saturn. So when you multiply by 12, all of these multiples of 30 degrees in the 11, 11 vibration collapse into conjunctions. And it, because they're so tight, it's still within orb. It's still within orb. It's, it's, you have a Saturn-Uranus alignment. Saturn on Uranus, Uranus on Saturn. Really fascinating to look at it that way. And then also, let's see, Saturn both ways, transiting Uranus, trinatal Mars. So this Mars conjunction, which is now showing up as Mars at 1 Aries, Transiting Mars at 1 Aries, natal Mars at 25 Pisces. Transiting Uranus is very tightly trying natal Mars. And the transiting Uranus is not moving extraordinarily fast. Transiting Mars is moving extraordinarily fast in the 132 vibration. Transiting Uranus is trying natal Mars. Mars Uranus, explosive, potential for an explosive thing to happen reinforcing it. So you've got Saturn, Uranus both ways, Uranus coming in with the Mars, and then Pluto gets involved. Transiting Pluto is square natal Saturn, very tightly, transiting Pluto at 21 Leo, natal Saturn 21 Scorpio, and vice versa, transiting Saturn 
at 10 Pisces, I believe is aspected to natal Pluto. Yes, it's opposition. I didn't draw that in, but the transiting Saturn at 10 Pisces 41, opposition to natal Pluto at 13 Virgo 45 with a 3 to be orb. Pluto jumps into the action. Bottom line, Pluto jumps into the action when we go to the 11 times 12. As if Mars, Saturn, Uranus is not bad enough. Well, let's throw in Pluto. This is an extraordinary day. Oh, I did draw it here. I drew this curved around to show the transiting Saturn opposite natal Pluto. So you're getting a Saturn-Pluto both ways. Wow. And, and you know, aspecting other things as well. Um, so Pluto's jumping in on the action as well when we look at it here. We also see it in a striking way as conjunctions. I'll show you this. To, uh, oh, do I have this even up? I don't think I have it up. Well, I was going to show it to you in the timeline, but you can do it yourself. It's very easy. If you pull up the 132 vibration of these charts and you go forward and backward a day, you will see that Uranus is crossing Saturn on that day. It starts out before Saturn. One day earlier, crosses right over it. Same thing with Saturn to Uranus. They both are exact within 24 hours of that event, crossing right over. Wow. And our theory is Saturn, Uranus especially, most likely with planets Mars and Saturn, will be involved in 11 vibration, less likely 8 vibration, but that sometimes happens, and it doesn't get more extreme than this. It's just amazing. So it's these charts are showing that Will Smith uh, is inclined to some quick and strong action, uh, but in his natal chart, it's not a, a, that excessive. The configurations in his natal chart are not that extreme. But we can see that an event like this can happen. This A lot of people thought, was well, this staged? Was this an act? It's become obvious now I'm making this video uh, two and a half days after the event. And it's now obvious that it was not staged. You know, he, Will Smith really lost his temper. You know, he went into this little fit, you could call it, or whatever. He reacted very strongly. Uh, and what happened is he was caught off guard by the transits. And these transits are pushing him to break free from uncomfortable and restrictive situations. Any Uranus transit in 11 vibration, it's volatile. It can't sit still. It's on edge. It catches him off guard. All these transits piling up. And that's why people can be out of character. I'm not saying he's completely out of character. I'm just saying it is not something he does on a regular basis. So we act out of character. We go to extremes on occasion. When these transits pile up very intensely, that's what happened. So he he's caught off guard by this feeling like he doesn't want to be held down. He can't tolerate a very uncomfortable and restrictive situation, sure enough, a very uncomfortable situation arises. This is a recipe for disaster. You have somebody who's on edge, and then Chris Rock comes in and makes this joke. Jada clearly is upset by it. Initially, Will Smith is not. He's kind of laughing at the joke. Jada is not finding this funny at all, and he, now Will Smith is in a very uncomfortable situation of having just laughed at a joke that his wife doesn't think is funny, and he's caught in a, you might say, a bit of a predicament, and he acts out in this extreme way, going up and slapping Chris Rock. You can see all the pressure, all the tension building up. Now, Third thing that, that feeds this, you have the transits that, are, that can be explosive under the, if the situation is uncomfortable enough. Second thing, the uncomfortable situation arises. This is like putting a match to a piece of paper. This can light up the situation. Third thing is... Does Will Smith have a strategy? Has he thought through this? Is he ready to deal with something like this? 
very often when we're pushed to a situation that we're not accustomed to, we're not ready. He's not ready. He could have done better things. You know, everybody's talking about, well, he could have done this, he could have done that. Well, he he didn't think it through. This is normal. We don't think through things that we're not inclined to to be involved in. But transits can push us in ways that are not typical. That's why everyone acts out of character at times. Um, and then we're not ready for it. So there it is. The whole situation, he hadn't thought through it. He just did what it instinctively came to him to do. He doesn't have a lot of time to think about this. Uh, the whole world is <laughs> looking at them, so to speak. And boom, before you know it, it's over. He's done it. Okay. Now, in this evidence-based approach of vibrational astrology, we want to visualize what's going on. We want to see how unusual this is. We want to be able to predict and see if it will happen in the future. Did it happen in the past? Can we do a research study on this? Can we give the, the client good information? And the answer is yes, 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 yes to all those questions. We make the astro signature forecast and based on transiting Saturn Uranus connections in you know, 11 vibration and multiples of 11 and the Mars Mars connection Mars transiting Mars moves very fast it's moving 11 times faster in 11 vibration everything's moving 11 times faster we cannot use transiting Mars in very high vibrations because it's flying by so fast the aspects won't last very long so for transiting Mars we can use only 11 vibration for transiting Saturn and Uranus, we can go all the way up to 132 vibration. We make an astro signature. We run it for Will Smith. And there is the peak right at that time. Right there. I ran this for two years. And the highest peak over two years is that day. Right there on March 27th and 28th, the... This graph peaks, showing that this is an unusual combination of planets. We can do this data visualization tool to help us see exactly how often this happens, what it looks like. Um, it's fascinating. We can we ran this astro signature. It, it calculates the planets once a day. We go in the software. We tell it to do it for 7 p.m. in Los Angeles, which is 2 a.m., universal time or you can call it Greenwich Mean Time. So it calculates the planets every day at 2 a.m. universal time. So this would be uh, 2 a.m. the next morning and there it is. There's the peak. Um, and by the way, in the, the new book that came out recently a little bit before making this video, The Astrology of Bipolar Disorder Scientific Breakthrough, all this coming out in early 2022, um, I describe events uh, of people having um, actually suicides that that occurred or, well, we don't know if they were suicides or people dying from drug overdose. That's what's clear. Uh, pushed to an extreme and we create these graphs using the same concepts. So, and we, and in that book, Astrology, Bipolar Disorder, Scientific Breakthrough, we also saw people dying from drug overdose at the highest peak over a long period and just before it reaches the peak. So in astrology, you have this idea of applying aspects. As those aspects are approaching there, an extreme intensity is when the tension seems to get highest. So there it is, just a, a little bit before its highest peak, and but still extremely high and higher than any other time in, in, in the two years I ran this for. Um, and also, of course, this the serious software that we use for this shows the details. And if you're curious, here are the transits. I've got it here, March 27th, 2 a.m. That's the equivalent of March 26th at 7 p.m. when uh, this event occurred. And we see planetary aspects that astrologers do not pay attention to. Nobody's looking at transiting Mars to natal Mars, 11 vibration, transiting Uranus to natal Saturn, 132, transiting Saturn to natal Uranus. 
33 vibration with these particular orbs in the vibrational chart considered to be trivial irrelevant it's the most powerful most dynamic most immediately relevant and i could jump directly to it by knowing what to look for so this vibrational astrology is radically new pioneering and and radically new in many ways the the analytical tools the interpretation and the way in which it's very very rigorously evidence-based we have a model and we analyze that model we visualize it and it's all working over and over and over again um you know as we just apply it to situations that that we're interested in so we take a look at it and this kind of illustrates how these ideas work we have you know as i describe in the book on bipolar disorder you know we did a hypothesis test confirmed it so exciting to see how this works anyway i wanted to show you specifically how that information shows up with the details of what was occurring and this is how you make the astro signature in the software and for anybody who wants to make it this particular one there it is you can pause this video and enter all these things in with uh, you can see what the orbs are and we use the orb a little bit smaller than we use for natal charts which we often do for transits we use half to three quarters of the uh, orb that we use in natal charts so i use a 12 degree orb and for transiting mars only 11 vibration as i mentioned and for transiting saturn to natal uranus and transiting uranus to natal saturn we have 11 22 33 44 66 88 and 132 those are all the basic overtones the basic overtones are you take your prime number in this case 11 times 2 4 8 and also 3 6 12 and there they are all with the same orb all with the same strength simple elegant uncomplicated and it produces the graph and shows what's happening okay um so by the way this is from the serious software and um, if you want to know more about the software it's at www.astrosoftware.com now let me get into something that we're especially interested in which is how do we interpret this you know i think i'm going to put this in a second video because i'm at 32 minutes and a, a lot of you may be more interested in the interpretation so i'll make a part two of this video on this event that will focus on the interpretation so if you want to get just right into the interpretation not the details of what's going on like how do we interpret saturn uranus in 11 vibration i'll put that in a separate video so i'm going to stop here for now and i'll see you back here in part two of this video of this uh sequence of videos. Thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.